Welcome to another digital art tip for Medibank video. Last year, I made an art tip plus bead paint video for Medibank and people really liked it. But some of y'all really want more and said that the video wasn't enough to explain my process. And looking back at that video, I was kind of cringy and was trying to be funny, but I wasn't. And it's sad, honestly. Also disclaimer, I am in no way shape or form an expert. I am only making this tutorial based on how I do my painting process. So to make these easier and simple, I made an overview and some timestamps in case you guys want to learn a specific topic or you probably already know what I'm talking about and prefer to learn the technical ones. So without further ado, let's get on with the video. As digital artists, you need the tools, which are your laptop or PC, and the most important necessity, your digital graphics tablet. There are lots of companies that manufacture graphic tablets, such as Wacom, Huion, XP Pen, Vake, Gaumon, and Genius, and so much more, but these are the companies that I know at least. But you could always get an iPad which is very common among artists these days because of its portability and all around use but it's pretty expensive. I started doing digital art seriously when I got my iPad but just used my fingers to draw and if you want you can check my old speed paint videos of my works using just my iPad. But now I use a display tablet which is the Vake VK1560. Choosing a graphic tablet is a bit tedious, so I got some tips for you in choosing your tablet. Choose a tablet that has a battery-free pen because it will be a hassle to get a battery-powered one or a chargeable pen. Make sure you choose a tablet that you're comfortable with in terms of work area. If you like to draw on the go, choose a tablet that is lightweight and that fits well on your backpack that it doesn't take up so much space. Always read the specs on the product you want to purchase. Lastly, read reviews or watch review videos on their experience with the tablet that you wish to purchase yourself to get an opinion. You can also check some of my review videos if you want to to get my opinion on some tablets that I got to review with. And last tip to you is, by all means, it's not about the brand of the tool but about the performance and its functionality. Plus, it all goes down to the user on how he or she will adapt to the material or tool. Now that we have the tools down, we can proceed to painting programs. Of course, this is a Medibang art tip video, but I feel like I should also give a little insight about art programs for you to use. If you're like me and don't want to pay for shit, I'll be recommending some free art programs like Medibang Paint Pro, Kirita, Fire Alpaca, Autodesk Sketchbook, and Ibis Paint. But if you want to know the paid programs, these are the following. Photoshop, Clip Studio Paint Pro, Procreate, and Paint Tool Sai, but you can always get the cracked version if you want to. So I got these questions on why I use Medibang rather than using Photoshop and Paint Tool Sai. Well, first of all, it's free. Lastly, it's like Photoshop and Paint Tool Sai mixed together. Again, you don't need a very expensive art program to make good art. All you need is the basic knowledge to make art and adapt to the program you use. Plus, Medibang is pretty underrated. Now, let's talk about Canvas. People tend to get this wrong in terms of size and proper resolution. You can either use inches, cm, or pixels. But for easier terms, use inches and then make sure your DPI is 300. That is the standard use of DPI. It helps on the resolution of your canvas and your overall work. I got nothing to say about brush settings and I've been bombarded with questions every single one of my videos on what brushes and what brush settings I use. So listen up, I honestly don't know what I'm doing. All the brushes you see here are all default brushes. As for their brush settings, I never touch them. Whatever the default setting of the brush was, I ain't gonna do any changes to it. I just leave it alone as it is. I just adjusted myself to the brushes the program has to offer and just go on with it. So the brushes I mainly use is the watercolor brush, airbrush, 
flat brush and the oil brush. I will show you a quick demonstration of these brushes on screen. If you're wondering where I get more brushes, they have other brushes for you to download on the cloud. Heck, you can even make your own brushes as well. I don't know how to make custom brushes, so yeah, I can't help you with that, sorry. Now let's move on to my painting process. When I start doing my painting process, I have three layers on my tab. First layer is blank, second layer is the sketch layer that I'll be using in this tutorial. The third layer are the base colors and the fourth is the background layer. And just for your convenience, I named the layers which to be honest, I never do. Once you got those down, I have a specific tool that is very essential to my process which is the color pick tool or the eye drop, but let's just call it a color pick tool. The use of the color pick tool is to help me on blending my shadows and etc. When I start painting, your sketch doesn't have to be that clean as long as you know what you've envisioned your work or your subject to be. Now you can either reduce the opacity of your sketch or not, it's all up to you. The sketch would either be black, but sometimes I like to use brown so it doesn't look harsh when I start blending it together when I paint. Before I start painting, I make sure the background layer isn't white. It should be at least gray or any dark cool colors. The reason behind it is because it will help me in the color contrast or color mood when I start painting and which I really highly recommend. So now I will be laying out the shadows of our subject in the first layer. But you could always lay out the shadows in the base color layer. Also make sure when you do shadows you know where your light source is. It helps a lot when navigating the shadows on your subject. If you're unsure of your light source, I have a link in the description that will help with shadows and portraits. Now this is where the color wheel take place. I use the airbrush and watercolor brush for the shadows. The shadows is basically just the dark shade of the color beside your base color. The reason because it gives more contrast and more depth in your shading and subject whereas using just the dark shade of the same base color. Same rule applies to doing highlights. Now this is where the color picker works its magic. So as I mentioned in my art tip video, if you still remember the cringe ass video that is, I color pick between the two colors, which is the base and the shadow. Once I got the color, use that to blend between the base and the shadow. With those in mind, we can start the painting process. I'll be starting off with the face. When painting, don't be afraid to paint over the sketch and base. It helps on the painting process just like what you do traditionally. The first thing I start working on is the eyes. And a quick tip for the eyes is that you don't use pure white. I only use pure white mainly for highlights and details and as for painting the eyes, don't use the darkest color in the color wheel for the lashes or the eye shape overall. Keep in mind that you want the colors to have certain contrast and balance in hues. Make sure you apply that to every part of your painting. I'll make sure to make separate videos on how I do eyes, nose, lips, and hair. Here is another tip when doing shading. Apply color theory to your painting. And what I mean is, if you have basic knowledge with color theory, this will help your painting a lot. By using two of the opposite colors together to form a depth shadow, it makes your painting pop out more and has more balance with colors. I advise you to practice doing color theory on your paintings, learn hues and tones, and just overall experiment with the color wheel and colors. 
And yes, warm and cool colors can go together. The brush I use is either the watercolor brush, flat brush, or oil brush to blend everything and paint. The differences between these three brushes are the texture. If you want a solid light texture in some areas of your painting, you can use the watercolor brush. For strand-like textures, which I usually use for the hair, is the flat brush. And if you want an overall texture like painting with great blending, I use the oil brush which these brushes can be found in the cloud to download. It's all up to you on what brush you mainly use or if you use the brushes simultaneously, which I do. Another tip is to flip your canvas. Flipping your canvas helps see any problems or if something is quite off in the painting. I suggest making this part of your habit. Now I'll be proceeding with the hair. When it comes to the hair, I use the airbrush for color guidance on shading, etc. Then go ham with the flat brush to blend and use the oil brush to have solid yet very texture-like strokes. Pressure sensitivity helps when doing light strokes and when you're doing strands. One tip I can give with hair is that you keep it simple when shading and do not overdo it too much and just keep it minimal. When doing highlights, it could go in two or three ways. Either you use the color theory method, use a lighter color in correspondent to its surroundings, or you use layers. When I mean layers, I mean use the layer modes when highlighting. Now to do some more details, I use the hard pastel brush for added texture to the skin and add more highlights to where I see fit to our subject.
Sometimes I use layer modes for lightings to make my works lively, so I make a layer above the layer where we paint it and clip it. Use the add layer mode and use a bright yellow to make these intense highlights and just place the highlight wherever you desire. Another mode is the overlay. It helps give more color to your works. Same goes to using the dodge layer. But of course, feel free to experiment with the layer modes on your pieces. And with that, we are done. I hope this tutorial is somewhat helpful to you and I will try to do more specific tutorials soon. And thanks so much for 20k subscribers. It's been such an amazing journey with you guys. And, and with that, thanks for watching and stay hydrated.